Hello friends, this video on DNF block elements part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we'll see the trends on the D block. We'll talk about the physical property trends, atomic size trends, ionization enthalpy trends. We'll talk about the oxidation state variations, standard electrode potentials, the solubility, the chemical reactivity, the magnetic properties, the colored ions, the complex ions, catalytic properties, interstitial compounds and alloy formation. We'll talk about these trends in the D block elements. Let's start with the physical properties. So if we talk about the physical property, almost all the transition metals have metallic property and that's why called transition metals. Because all of these have metallic properties. When I say metallic properties, they have high tensile strength, they are ductile, they are malleable, they have high thermal and electrical conductivity, they have metallic luster, they have high melting and boiling point. There are some exceptions to it, but let me write those uh, things. They have all have metallic properties like high tensile strength, high tensile strength, they are ductile, they are malleable, they have they have high thermal and electrical conductivity. Electrical conductivity. See, when you talk about transition metal, you talk about iron. Think of iron. You, you can write almost all the properties of iron. Think of like metallic luster, gold, if you see, has metallic luster, gold, platinum, silver has this metallic luster and they have high melting and boiling point okay in fact they have high enthalpy of ionization also we will see that and all of these are solid except uh, mercury we just, we just saw mercury is only in the liquid form in the room temperature other are all solid Okay, so this is uh, the trend. Actually, most of these uh, D block elements you'll see they have uh, they are metallic in nature. Now I have told that they have high melting and boiling point. Now the question is why they have high melting point. See if you see the electronic configuration, they have n minus one d orbital. N, N, S orbital, right? These two orbitals actually are my valence orbitals. It has two valence orbitals. So electrons in these two orbitals take part in the interatomic metallic bonding, right? Since there are more electrons for the bonding, more stronger is the bond, and more stronger is the bond, higher is the melting point. Okay? See, melting point directly depends on my interatomic metallic bond. More stronger is the bond, difficulty is to break the bond. And in this case, the interatomic metallic bond is formed by D and S orbital electrons. Since there are two orbitals electron taking part in the bond formation, there are more electrons taking part in the bond formation, stronger is the bond. Stronger is the bond, that means higher is the melting point. Okay. Uh, there are some exceptions, for example, zinc. Zinc has low melting point. Why? If you talk about zinc, we have seen that the electronic configuration of zinc was argon 3D10, 4S2. Correct? So in this case, if you see 3D is totally filled. Since 3D is totally filled, actually D orbital doesn't take part in the bonding in the metallic bonding only the 4s orbital takes part in the metallic bonding so they have less electrons for bond formation and lower is the melting point for zinc please note the exception in the transition metal zinc has lower melting point and the reason is the d orbital is filled in fact zinc is not even considered a transition metal if you talk about the d block elements now yeah zinc is a d block element and d orbital is totally filled d orbital doesn't take part in the bonding so the bonding is weak, bonding is weak, hence melting point is low. Okay, 
So if we talk about the melting point actually, the so melting point is maximum somewhere in the middle. So we'll see this. You see this, this is the melting point uh, curve, the melting point actually. So if you see the melting point actually is maximum somewhere in the middle if you talk about these elements. Uh, tungsten, where is the tungsten? Tungsten is this guy, these people, right? So if you see the melting point is increasing if we are moving from left to right and then again it is decreasing, correct? Same thing, you, you take any trend, you, you take this, uh, this one starting with titanium, vanadium, chromium, this is maximum here, then goes down and goes down again, right? With the trend, so the melting point is somewhere maximum in this range, right? And then again decreases. Why? See, again, if you see, the answer is that I already told that melting point depends on my bonding. And who does the bonding? My unpaired electrons correct the paired electrons won't take part in bonding because they, they are I mean, they are all uh, paired and they are stable they don't want to take part in the bonding so if you see these uh, elements they have more unpaired d electrons see if you start with let's suppose titanium titanium is what 3d let me write here 3d2 4s2 okay then you go to vanadium that is 3d2 4s3 and then you go to chromium 3d2 4s4 and then manganese right 3d5 4s2 now if you see the number of unpaired electron in titanium is what for d one and two correct both are unpaired if you talk about manganese manganese is 3d5 manganese is one two three four five the number of unpaired electron is five in d orbital but let's talk let's talk about copper copper the electronic configuration of copper is 3d10 4s1 correct so let's talk about the copper. Copper have 10 electrons. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So number of unpaired electron? 0 actually if you see. Correct. If we talk about nickel. Nickel the electronic configuration is 3D8. Let me write here. Nickel. 3D8 4S2. If we talk about nickel, let's see the number of uh, unpaired electron this is nickel 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so if you see there are two unpaired electrons in nickel so if you see the number of unpaired electron increases and it is maximum at, at uh, manganese and then again it goes down and we have seen that the metallic point where the melting point depends on the bonding and that depends on the unpaired electron so the number of unpaired electron increases and then goes down so same is the trend for the melting point the melting point will actually increase and then will go down correct we talk about number of unpaired electrons here you see that uh, this guy has one unpaired electron this has two this has three this has four this has five this is again four and this is three again two this is zero and this is in fact this is one actually copper has one s orbital that is one unpaired electron in S. Yeah. This is one and this is zero. This is how the trend is. Okay, and same is the trend for melting and boiling point. Now let's talk about high enthalpy of atomization. We have seen that, we have told that the enthalpy of atomization uh, is very high. First understand what is this enthalpy of atomization. See, this is nothing but the heat required to convert one mole of substance in its stable state into the constituent atom in the gas state. Please note, for example, I have iron in the stable state in my solid. I want to convert this into 
gas state. So the energy required, for example, for this, the energy required is 415 kilojoule per mole. So for one mole of iron solid, you need almost 415 kilojoule of energy to convert this into iron gas. Right? So it is nothing but heat required to convert one mole of substance in its stable state into the constituent atom in the gaseous state. Okay, and please note for metal actually the enthalpy of atom uh, atomization is nothing but the enthalpy of sublimation because we are going from solid to gas. Ninety nine percent of the metal is solid except mercury, which is a little liquid. So we generally say this is nothing but enthalpy of sublimation also, right? Because most of the metal is solid at STP. Okay, so this delta H atom. Is high. What does it suggest? As I told, this is high. What does it suggest? It suggests that these transition metals are held together by a strong metallic bond. Correct? Since they are held together by a strong metallic bond, that means they have very high delta H. Talk about zinc, will have it less delta H. Why? Because zinc has filled d orbitals, it is actually one three one kilojoule per mole. Okay. Same same trend here. The maximum will occur at the center. The same trend as melting point because here also we are concerned about the metallic bond, and the metallic bond depends on the unpaired electron. And the number of unpaired electron follows this trend. So it will it will be maxima somewhere here and minima at the extreme. And please note one more thing. Actually, this delta H at uh, atomization is actually is an important factor to determine the electrode potential. If this value is very high, delta H eight atom is very high. These metals tend to behave like noble metal, and they tend to behave like noble metal, and this will have impact on the electrode potential. We'll, we'll see that, but just understand that delta H atm will actually decide how reactive a metal is. Okay. This is the diagram which talks about the lattice structure for different uh, d block elements. For example, for vanadium it is BCC. For chromium also it's BCC. Iron also BCC. Cobalt is CCP. You can just pause this uh, video and you can watch this uh, lattice structure. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos. Attend free online tests, get pre-study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.